Yeah. All right, we are live. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. It's President's Day today. And I am so blessed. I thought this was going to be uh, remote, but I get to have my beautiful friend. She's an amazing human being, talented human being. She makes me look awful. Look how beautiful she looks. Now, now. She's beautiful inside and out. I'm self-deprecating, but you know it's true. Uh, the lovely, amazing Miss Erica Dunlap. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so we are celebrating Black History Month on the TED Show this month. Obviously, if you did not know, February is Black History Month. And, and I'm black. And, yeah, is that why you're here? <laughs> that is a perfect fit. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> All right. So this is why we do this stuff live. We've been friends for a long, a long time. time. So I, I wondered why I had invited you. I couldn't figure it out, but I knew we'd come to that. Uh, so... But my, the reason I want to do the series is because I do want people to put a personal face, put a personal um, feeling behind what Black History Month means and to showcase uh, leaders, entrepreneurs, uh, serve people with a servant's heart, anyone out there who's doing amazing things in the community. And I want the community to see that live and crazy like we are. So welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's been several years. It has been several years. I'm always honored. And when I got that phone call this morning, you know, I had just this feeling. <laughs> She's around the corner, isn't she? So we are doing this live and together. Uh, so for the people, I said this before we went live, for the people who don't know who Erica Dunlap is, those of you who might be under a rock, tell them a little bit about you. Well, as he said, I am the one and only. Actually, there is another Erica Dunlap around town, but she's spelled not Spelled the same way? Spelled the same way. No way. And we were born several months apart, so no it was just a popular year. Interesting. But anyhow, <laughs> I am a native um, of Orlando, and I have um, had the pleasure of being Miss Florida and Miss America for the past 17 years. Woo! And um, yes, that time is kind of winding up to the 20 year mark. So that's exciting. It's, you know, I can't believe it's been 17 years. You know, my girls are big fans of yours and that yellow dress is just iconic at this point, I feel oh, like. Uh, but yeah, Miss America. And, but you, it's interesting because Miss America to me, um, it, it certainly is part of you, but it doesn't define you. So I could do a whole show on that at some mm -hmm. point, but we're here to talk about black history. Well, you know, but the, the cool part about it and, and has it, as it correlates to Black History Month, I am the only Black woman who's ever been Miss Florida, which I think is so fascinating. Um, and in the 90 year history of the program and 100 year history of Miss America, to see that, you know, there's certain states that have only had, you know, one person represent. Representation matters so much. And yes. why does it matter? Because there is a scholarship component to the Miss America program that is so important for young women to have access to be able to go to school and to go to school student loan free. You know, I've never touched a student loan. I have no nice. idea what it's like. And I Blessings. graduated. Yeah, I mean, it really a big part of that is because of my participation in the program. So I'm grateful to uh, the Miss America organization for that opportunity. But beyond that, um, just having the chance to be able to go to elementary schools and to be that queen, be that princess that little girls can look up to, go to high schools and to be that person that, you know, some young lady is looking at me giving a speech and they say, OK, I can do something important with my life. It doesn't have to be a pageant, but I can set a goal and make my dreams come true and I can be the first in my family or I can be the first in the whole legacy of my lineage to be able to do something like that. It's been huge. Was that where you were at? Like when you won, if you've seen the video, um, it, it, it's just, it's a beautiful moment. And so did you realize what that was going to entail moving forward? Did you have this two year, five year, 10 year plan, or was it just a whirlwind that you learned during that period? You just learn it as you go. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people all the time, you have no clue what you're doing until you're three months in. Understood. And then you kind of know it's kind of like parenthood. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you don't really I'm still know. learning. Every age group. You don't know what you're getting into until it actually happens to you. <laughs> once you start going through that journey, so it's been an amazing journey. And for the past 18 years, I have um, lived as an entrepreneur and entertainer, and I've had this great opportunity to just reach so many audiences of people. Um, my influence has touched millions of people, and that's something that, as a 21 year old, you could not have told me that that would be 
the case for my life. I, I hope so, but I didn't really know what that meant until you start getting the emails and you start getting the, the fan mail that comes in where someone tells you just how much you have impacted their life and how much your story has helped them to create their own journey and to set a goal and again, start going for it. I, I think people have a preconceived notion. I know I, I, I did, and as a dude, I think I definitely did. Miss America, you've got your year, you're out and about, you're on all the circuit. And then it ends and then we never hear from you again and we have no idea what happened. How did you take after the year was over? Because you have a successful business. You said you're an entrepreneur, an entertainer. You have Crown Communications Group, um, which I love the name, of course. I don't know where you got it from. Wink, wink. Uh, but I think that there's a journey there because you it stops when the year's over. You turn your crown over to the next Miss America and then you have to figure out how to use that as a catalyst. So what was that process like? How did you decide, all right, this is where I'm gonna shift my focus and use it as the catalyst or the jumping point? Well, it's been very difficult to be completely honest with you because I came back to Orlando from that whirlwind year of traveling and I, I went to 37 states throughout that time. So I didn't go to all 50 states, but I did go to 37. And in that, uh, you know, I never expected to go to North, Dakota, North Dakota and Wyoming and some of the places that I got a chance to go to. But I went to these different places and I, I laid my seeds, if you will. And then I came back and kind of watched everything grow in front of me. But I came back and went straight back to UCF. So in going to college again and being a regular college student again, but with this caveat of being a celebrity, it was very strange because my peers were essentially doing the same things that we were doing before I became, you know, the, the campus star. Right. And um, from that point forward, it was a matter of me determining how to be an adult in my childhood home. So Ooh. that was very unusual because I had amassed this new notoriety and there were a lot of people who didn't really know how to take me as being Miss America from just being Erica, Erica a year before. Right. Um, and so there was a transition there. And to some extent, that transition is still going on because there's still some people who really don't know how to place me. Um, oh, I find that at interesting. That point, Why? Well, well, you know, <laughs> you know well, but it was hard because I wasn't coming back to, you know, work at a job. You right. know, I wasn't working at a specific place. And um, being that I, I, you know, I was making a lot of money doing speaking engagements and making appearances, and it was just not typical. Um, so it has been a very interesting transition. But with that, um, you continue on. Many Miss Americas continue on with their philanthropy and their community service. Um, I'm a woman of the community, even still. I support the American Heart Association, um, the Greater Orlando chapter, and that's one of my favorite philanthropies. But there's so many others that I'm connected to that I love um, and I will continue to support for the, the next several decades because I'm from here. I'm a product of Orlando and the people who have helped me to be who I am. I'm wearing Boone High School orange today, Woo! if you didn't notice. I'm a grenadier. <laughs> That's all right. Stacy's a brave, as yeah. they call him, a Boone brave. So, you know, there's so many people who have been a part of helping me to be who I am today. And I still represent that. And I still am very connected to um, my Orlando roots. I live here. Um, my child was born here. And, I know. I got to ask you about that. So motherhood. And I do, we are going to get to Black History Month, but I feel like giving a history of you as a Black woman is part of that whole experience. I want people to see mm -hmm. uh, and understand um, the process. So not the whole process. That's for a completely different show. It's another show. <laughs> oh, another, another show. show another I have not had any cocktails yet this morning. <laughs> I'd need one for that. Uh, motherhood. So motherhood, uh, did it change you? I, I know that's such a silly question to ask, but I think a lot of people give the pat answer. Um, yes, I don't know what I was thinking or yes. Oh my God, my life is complete now. Uh, what was that like? Tell us a little bit about the motherhood process because you, you took um, as you should, you're beautiful and you're great in front of the camera. You had beautiful pictures out and you really kind of, you've been documenting, you've allowed us to see a little bit of your life. Uh, with your daughter, but what was becoming a mother like for you? I, you know, you have a 50 50. You're either going to get a boy or a girl, but I am so glad I got a girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. She is like my little best friend 
for real. And I just adore this child. And it seems like she adores me back. And that has been the most fun for me is just having this mutual love, like this love that I have for this child. It just it just warms me up. She's the best part of every day um, when, you know, there are definitely there are women who can uh, uh, resonate with with postpartum depression and you go through that. I think there's just a period of time where you're just in a funk because you don't, you don't know what to do and your body's all out of whack and your hormones are crazy and everything is just trying to level itself off. But she has made life so easy every day because, oh, you know, it, we all have stinky diapers. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that, she really is the sweetest, most loving. It's just so fun to watch her explore and to learn new things. I just bought her. So she has this kitchenette set. She's 15 months. So, you know, we got to teach him early how to cook. And, like, teach him stuff. So she's 15 months and I just bought her a little skillet. And this skillet is really cool because you put batteries in it and it has like the, the actual sizzle sound. Nice. Oh, God, so now she awesome. cooked for me yesterday and it was just so sweet watching her because she's watched me cook in the kitchen. And usually she like screams because she wants something immediately. You know, of everything course. goes in your mouth when you're a baby. Always. But she just is so precious. She cooked for me yesterday and it was just like, this is what it's all about. It's it, teaching it you teaching some little person how to become an adult and how to be independent and successful. And that is my new, that's my new job, my real job. It, it is. I mean, I feel like it is at the end of the day. That's our real job is to um, help our children learn how to maneuver through this crazy world mm -hmm. uh, and be the best human beings that they possibly can be. Did you, did you feel like um, it helped fill any kind of hole? Did you, did oh you have gosh. a close relationship with your mom? Mm -hmm. But I feel like for a lot of parents, it, you're experiencing a different kind of love and affection for another living being that you've never felt before. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, I, I definitely went through a couple months of therapy just because I was like, okay, I need to really balance myself and make sure that I'm doing this right. And the one question that my therapist would ask me week after week is, are you, are you enjoying being a mom? And I enjoy it so much because it's just another thing to do. I mean, I'm always busy. I'm always accomplishing new things and I'm always doing a lot. But it was just one more task to add on. No big deal. And it's <laughs> it's a pleasure to do that because she's just so sweet. And she's I just love her. I got so, so glad much. I got to see her on Thursday. Yeah. We both did the walk a mile in her shoes. And I'm taking her to places with me because I want her to learn, you know, how to how to be well mannered and how to adjust to different people and different settings. And she's learning that now. And so one thing that I do have to be mindful of and other Miss Americas have taught me this, especially when you have a daughter, you don't want her to grow up in your shadow. Correct. You know, I want her to have her own spotlight, whatever that is. If she wants to play softball, if she wants to roll around in the dirt, I don't care whatever <laughs> it is that she wants to do. I just want her to be great at it. And I want her to have a good time doing it. And I don't want her to feel like she has to, measure up to mommy in any way she's her own person and i want her to have her own lane and i'm just going to help her to drive in that lane as soon as you're cognizant possible. of that early on i think is so important setting that i also love that you you bring her out to events that was a philanthropic event an awareness event a community event and i feel like um teaching them early how important that is mm -hmm. to you um stays with them forever i think it's just critical all right let's talk about the work uh, before we get into Black History Month, yeah. um, we'll tell them about, oh, we might, no, I swear I'm going to get to that, um, Crown Communications Group. Mm -hmm. What is that? Tell people what you, because you've met, you've sort of touched on entertain, you do business, but tell them what Crown Communication Group does. What is, what is its purpose? What is its mission? So I started Crown Communication Group in 2014, and it was essentially an answer to being able to... Um, filter through all of my speaking engagements because I was getting so much stuff that was coming in and I just wanted to make it a formal company. But beyond that, I also have helped a lot of people with their own PR and communication strategies, people and companies. And so that's what we do. We focus in on how to take your brand to the next level, how to elevate your brand, whether it's uh, making sure that your entire company and your leadership has the right, um, the right headshots, making sure that they have their bios together. And a lot of people 
You know, they're professional and they're good at what they do, but they don't know how to present themselves in a way that is uh, polished yes. and gives them the look that they want to as far as it, it, it's being a professional. So I help them to form that and I have a team that pulls it all together and we create a great product and we also are in production. And so we have a YouTube show that we're in production with um, called Shop Talk. And so it's myself and two other ladies who it. we talk about things that women talk about at the beauty salon. So we're letting you Ooh. into the magic and the secrecy. Dude, you better pay salon. attention. <laughs> I tune in, I subscribe to that and you'll be, you'll be so excited that you get a little insight uh, <laughs> there. Cause y'all do talk. Ooh. Oh yes. And just like men talk at the bar oh, no, shop, it's, we you do know, too. you guys, yeah, quite a bit. So. <laughs> you know, we are expanding the scope of what Crown Communication Group does, but a big part of it has been creating this communications platform for people who really don't know how to do it on their own. Um, and beyond that, you know, my degree from UCF was in advertising and public relations. And so I took that. I took my experiences as Miss America. I took all the relationships that I gathered and created a company. It's beautiful, beautiful. And I think it's important for you to have that conduit. Mm -hmm. it's a it's a catch-all yes which is i get it is necessary i, I need a catch-all real bad <laughs> right now uh not on your level you but i need a catch-all catch i am something <laughs> i'm my own brand uh let's talk about black history month mm -hmm. um before we went live i i just shared with you some of the things um that my crazy um self and some other people think uh it's not really me it's the other people but i want people to personal i want to get a personal feeling from my guests like you during Black History Month, why Black History Month is important. Why do we um, have a month that talks about Black history? Why do we have a month and why does that mean something? Why is it not just another made up month that uh, people can just shake their head off at? You know, I had a mother-in-law who asked me, I had a mother-in-law <laughs> once. <laughs> I forgot no about longer. that. <laughs> That's for another show, too. <laughs> oh, yes, it is, with a lot of drinks. But no, she actually questioned me on that, and it was somewhat offensive because it was like, lady, are you kidding me? This is, you know, I would expect for you to know why this is important because, A, I'm a part of your life, and B, because diversity is important, represent, representation matters, but this month is the culmination of so many achievements and so many successes that have helped life to be so much easier for so many people. And, um, it, you know, it always bothers me when people don't recognize why it's important. And I think it, it makes them feel uncomfortable because perhaps they don't have the one black friend or because they don't have <laughs> the experiences with people that will help them to stay relevant in the, the mission towards what Black History Month stands for. So to me, it stands for celebrating the accomplishments and the achievements of people who have been marginalized and have not had the representation. Um, like I said, as being the only Black Miss Florida, um, what does that say to other young ladies who should be competing for the crown of Miss Florida and they don't feel like they could ever win? I was that person. I felt like I was never gonna win Miss Florida because nobody before me had ever won. And as it turned out, I was the appointed person to, to travel that road and to lay those bricks uh, for other young ladies to be able to walk in my in my footsteps, if you will. Um, and so I've been it, it's been hard. It's hard to be a trailblazer. It's hard to be the first of anything because you're figuring it out as you go. Um, but with that, you also get to leave a legacy that um, others can improve upon. So that's that's what it's really all about is setting um, setting up the stage for other people to be able to recognize and appreciate and celebrate the accomplishment of Black Americans, but then also finding ways for us to inspire the future generations to be able to improve. Beautifully said. See, it should say Erica Dunlap instead of Ted <laughs> Bogert there. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting about um, anytime I have a conversation about Black History Month is that immediately people go to uh, people that they recognize, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Maya Angelou, um, Angelou, 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 Maya. <laughs> uh, and I think that that's where it stops. So they can, but they don't realize that there's an entire history of human beings, uh, Black people who have done amazing things just, I hate that we have to have the conversation, but just like any other 
um, it's not all white people, I guess is what I'm saying. And I think it's so important for people to recognize that there are trailblazers. The fact that there's only, you're the only Miss Florida, black Miss Florida to date uh, says a lot, says to me, this is exactly why we need to have a Black History Month mm -hmm. uh, so that people fe can feel, ed get educated and know that we still have so much work to do. The fact that we're talking right now about a uh, Black female Supreme Court justice mm -hmm. uh, just does my heart so good. I don't think any of that would have progressed if we didn't continue to have Black History Month and celebrate and continue to shine a light on where the uh, weaknesses are, where the, the missing pieces are. Um, is that something that you think about on a daily basis? And I'm going to get to my question. That is my question. But the reason I ask it, I had somebody come on uh, a black gentleman and he said, I live this every day mm -hmm. and having a month just allows me to celebrate it more. But every single day, I feel like I'm celebrating. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes you feel like there's some pride in what you are continuously doing, but what you've already done. So the bricks that I've laid, there's there's a pride there. There's um, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with being proud of what you have accomplished. And knowing that you put the work in and that you're actually being celebrated for it, that's huge because we haven't, in large part, been able to just openly celebrate ourselves and um, in the workplace, um, sometimes in social, social settings. And so this is, it's important. And I think that Black History Month should continue. And if it makes you uncomfortable, well, darling, then you need to have a conversation <laughs> with somebody like me because I will help you to figure out how to make yourself a little bit more comfortable. I will say many years ago, I did um, a speaking engagement for uh, a large contingency of uh, white female realtors. And in order to help them to understand how they too can be a part of the movement, if you will, I, I told them about other white Americans who were allies during the civil rights movement specifically, and some that are still alive, who I reached out to in my research, and they were just so warm and so welcoming and telling me about their story, how they were also, um, they were you know, put in jail and they were arrested and they fought some of the same struggles because they didn't see why there was such a uh, inhumanity as it related to black people. And so I say that if you, if you took the time to be courageous and to be brave enough to um, speak up for any kind of injustice that you see, then you too should be celebrated. And I think a lot of people don't want to be brave. They want to be comfortable. Yes. And so if you're comfortable, then it's going to make you a little uneasy when you have to talk about something that well, I don't understand what's the big deal. You know, I've heard that many times before. And that just imagine. makes me, it boils me because it's like life is going to continue going on. Your children are going to have friends. And some of you, I hope you have the great fortune of your children marrying someone who you think that you don't like. Because when that <laughs> happens, I'm serious, it's happened uh, to several people that I've known. And when when their children merge, and the diversity now becomes a part of their family. What are you going to do when these grandbabies who are just so sweet and so loving and just want to be around you? Are you really going to shut them out and you're going to close off your own legacy because of your biases and because of your prejudice? That makes absolutely no sense. So, you know, I just think that we should celebrate um, more often the accomplishments of those who have taken the time to be courageous. I agree. Beautiful. All right. If I say the word hero to you, who's the first person that comes to mind? Oh, the first hero that comes to mind, besides my mother, because she has been such a rock for myself and for my family. She has been um, my confidant and my stylist and yes. so many wonderful things over the years. Um, she really has been um, such a great person, but someone else that I don't know if she gets a lot of... Um, of recognition, um, Felicia Rashad, who was Claire Huxtable. Yes. And um, while I know Cosby is like a bad word anymore, what she did in that television show in the 80s was she provided um, she provided a, a, an, an opportunity for people to see success and to see a strong woman who was also vulnerable enough to literally let us in the home 
and see how how she made that homework. And I got a chance to meet her when I was 17 and I was wow. like completely starstruck. Um, but she's always been one person that I try to emulate because she's just so very eloquent and elegant. And the way that she presents her life is one that I would like to also emulate. I always love to ask that question because I never know what the answer is going to be. And I'm always so surprised. I, I love that. And when you think about it growing up, that was really the first uh, time that we had seen a successful attorney a uh, black woman in a household where she was also married and had children and, it, and married it, to a doctor um, it, and had this aspirational family. Yes. So to me, she's a hero to me in a way. Um, and now she's the Dean of the school of, um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not completely remembering, but I believe the Dean of the school of um, arts and humanities at Howard university. And she's just phenomenal. Like she's just a well-rounded individual who has presented again this this platform for people to to see what life could be like and she gave me a lot of inspiration so and i bet you are and an, i know for a fact you're an inspiration just like that Thank to you. so so many girls and boys uh, people kids just to see what you have accomplished uh you've got an amazing heart you know i don't want to get all choked up and sappy here but i think it's important for people to see that human side because i I feel like uh, when you are in any kind of celebrity status or in the public eye, people have this crazy persona about you. I mean, mm -hmm. everything's champagne, diamonds. Well, and when gold. you're Miss America specifically, <laughs> people want to paint the picture that, you know, I am automatically, you know, I know. hoity toity. And I have my moments, but I'm not <laughs> mean to people. I don't do that. I, I try not to be. I mean, everybody has their moments and. Sometimes you may catch me on the wrong day because, you know, I go through life just like everybody else. But I will say that, um, you know, I'm I do my very best to do as I would want other people to do to me. People who I have been so inspired by and motivated by. I want to be that to somebody else. And you so. are. You absolutely are. That's what we try to do every day. All right. Tell them how they can reach out to you because you know what? She's got a website, y'all. Yeah. She she does still live local. Don't show up at her house. Yeah. Um, but how can they best reach you, learn more about what you do, follow follow you and all the amazing things that you're doing yes, in our don't world? Don't show up in my house. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, please don't. But you can follow me on ericadunlap.com and on all social media. I'm at Erica Dunlap and you spell it with a C and a K. So I'm not Erica with a C. I'm not Erica with a K. I'm Erica with, with a C, C and a K. I so. love it. All right. You're a joy. I love you to pieces you, so much. Uh, you guys reach out. Check her out. Check out ericadunlap.com. And of course, I've tagged all of her social media. And if you want uh, somebody to brand you, PR you, get you all organized, get, get rid of that Glamour Shots picture you have, <laughs> please uh, reach out to you. Erica. <laughs>